tutorial for NoCoHQ, and in today's tutorial we're going to take a closer look at workflow APIs. In the previous tutorial we took a look at the data API, and today we're going to take a look at backend workflows and how to build your own um, backend workflows that can be triggered using the workflow API by Bubble. And this is a very, very powerful feature um, that not everyone knows about, but it basically allows you to connect your Bubble application to almost any external application out there to trigger things happening in your Bubble application. And these things don't always have to do just with data because with the data API, what you can do is create, modify, delete data types, data entries. With the workflow API, you can both basically define any kind or almost any kind of workflow that should be triggered. For example, an email should be sent or um, a calculation should be made or all kinds of things can be made using workflow APIs. These are basically a way of exposing and building your own API in Bubble from your Bubble application. So let's take a look at that. We're going to show you how to enable it, how to build your first workflow API, uh, maybe build a few examples and then test that using Postman. And Postman is a free API testing tool that you can download and I would highly recommend you to download it to always test out your APIs before using them anywhere. So in order to expose uh, the workflow API, what you want to do in your Bubble app, you want to head over to settings, you want to go to API, and you want to say, all right, I want to enable the workflow API and backend workflows. Again, previously we talked about data API. We're not going to use that today. We're going to just use the workflow API and backend workflows. And you can see already Bubble provides us here with the default um, endpoint of, of our API basically. So this will always, oops, that will always be our endpoint and we will append the exact workflow that we want to um, target at the end here, but more of that um, in a second. So now after enabling this, you will have access to this new menu basically here called backend workflow. This is really, really powerful. Let's click on that. This here allows, you can see you can't design anything here, um, allows you to create backend workflows and there are things like recurring events, database triggers, but we're going to focus on API workflow. So let's create a new API workflow. And this API workflow will have a name. So um, let's just call it demo right now. Okay. And here are a few very important um, things that you can configure. First of all, expose as a public API workflow. This is really important. So what does that mean? This basically means that if you uncheck this, this workflow or this backend workflow can only be triggered from within your application, from in your within your Bubble app. So don't forget, you can also trigger backend workflows in your Bubble app. So for example, you have a button here and you want to say, all right, when this button is pressed, I want a custom event, schedule an API workflow. And now we have this workflow here called demo and I want to schedule it now. So this will be an API workflow or a workflow that is tr uh, scheduled or triggered um, server side. Okay, and we defined that here. However, the focus of this tutorial will be more external triggers. So maybe another application or something else. So we want to expose it as a public API workflow. This means this API or this workflow can be triggered from anywhere and not only from within your Bubble app. Then we have these two checks here. This workflow can be run without authentication. Um, if you're exposing as a public API, I wouldn't recommend that because this will mean um, an API key won't be required. So in most cases, you don't want to check that and ignore privacy rules when running the workflow. Well, this would make mean that these privacy settings that you define here won't be um, or will be ignored basically if you check this box. Also, it depends on what you want to do. We're just going to keep this unchecked. So we have this endpoint here demo and want to expose it as a public API workflow. And now you can just usually, as always in Bubble, just define what should happen in this workflow. So in this case, when the workflow, or the API workflow is triggered, we could sign someone up, we can send a password email, a password reset email, uh, we could create a thing, obviously, we could send an email, um, uh, and so on and so forth. And obviously, if you have plugins installed, you could um, basically um, do functionality there as well. But let's keep our uh, use case quite simple. Let's say you have an external application where a form can be submitted or something else. And then when this is pressed, the button in your other app, the data should be sent over to Bubble. Okay. Um, a new data type should be created and you as well as you as the admin should be informed via email and the user should be informed via email. So how are we going to do this? Well, the thing is, these are going to be three 
uh, subsequent workflows. So first of all, create a thing and then to send email action. We can just build them in here. However, how is the workflow gonna know um, who to send the email to or what to create, what data type, okay? And we're gonna be able to define this by setting parameters, okay? So parameters are basically pieces of information that you send within an API call, okay? And we're gonna take a look at that by saying, all right, we have our first parameter, which is our key. Let's call that our user email, okay? And this will be of type text. We have another parameter, which will be the, um, let's, let's for example say we're creating a new product for whatever reason. So let's create a new data type called product. Um, and the product consists of just a name basically, okay? Of type text. So now we can add a new parameter here. We can call that product name. Okay, um, let's actually create one third parameter. Uh, we also want to have a product price of type number. Okay, so now we can define, all right, a third parameter should be the price type uh, number. Okay, so we have these three parameters, which basically now mean we have to pass these three values when making an API call, so we, we can then use this information here. You could, for example, define, okay, should this be optional or not? Okay, so, and right now these are all three required. Okay, we want that. Um, and should there be query string or not? Query string would mean that, that these pieces of data are appended in the URL itself. Um, usually, I wouldn't recommend doing that. It's a bit less safe. Um, usually, uh, I would recommend just using normal parameters. You can use query string, but we're going to focus on the normal form data, or how is it called? Okay, so now, it's quite simple, we can just go ahead and say, all right, data, I wanna create a new thing, I wanna create a new product, and now I wanna set the field, and the name should just be, and you can see we have access to these three parameters we defined. So the name should just be product name. So whatever the product name that is passed in this API call, that should be taken as the name. Same thing for the price, we wanna have the price taken over, okay? You can even, as always, add conditionals. You could say only when the price is greater than, I don't know, 90, okay? If for whatever reason you want to do that, okay? And you could then send an email if it's greater than, uh, less than 90, you could say, um, send an email to the admin which says don't, uh, don't create a new product or something like that. So you have access to all bubble uh, functionality as always. Step in the workflow, sending an email. Again, we can define the to email, uh, user email, which is a parameter. And then you can define the sender name as always. So I don't know, my app, have a subject, uh, uh, your product was created. And then you can have like a body, which is like um, summary uh, name of product. And then you have again a parameter. So we always have access to this dynamic data, the product name, and then we have price of product, for example. So quite simple. Um, but basically what we have, we have this dynamic data which is passed in as parameters. We're using this to trigger a whole workflow which consists of subsequent steps. Um, this is a quite simple use case, creating a new data type, sending an email, but of course you could uh, create lots of different steps here as well. Okay, so I'm just gonna copy this part and also send an email to me, the admin. So let's say my email is admin, at no, or I just do info at nokohq.com. Um, and then the subject is a new product was submitted. And we can leave the body as it is, okay? So that's basically with this workflow. What I wanna show you now is how to test this and how to then obviously trigger that from an external um, application, um, your landing page, a form, whatever it is, okay? So because the other application did not support API calls because it needed a paid plan. So I'm here right now, I changed just the application Nothing changed except the endpoint, basically. So now um, the application just has a different name, but uh, all the rest is still the same. So let's open our um, uh, application Postman, where we can make our API calls and test everything and start making the um, test of the API call to see if it works. So first of all, what you want to do, you want to copy the actual endpoint. So this is this one in this case, okay? I'm gonna go back to Postman going to enter request URL and what you want to do at the end you want to add a slash and then the name of the endpoint in our case we just call if we take a look at that we call the workflow here demo so that's the endpoint we're going to use okay so demo now um, we want to change the method to post because this is the uh, request that has to be made uh, using workflow APIs 
Let's actually click on send and see what happens. And we should get an error message. Yes, uh, we're missing some data. Okay. As you can see, I changed this here to this workflow can be run without authentication. If I uncheck this, this will now require an API call. So let's try that again. And you can see now it's unauthorized. You must authenticate to call this method. So let's start off with that. To authenticate, you first of all want to go over to settings. Under API, you want to create an API token. So you can generate a new one or use an old one. I generate a new one here. I'm just going to call it demo. And I'm going to copy this key here. Okay, so copy this whole key. Great. Go back to Postman. And I want to head over to headers. And the authentic authentication always has the same structure. The key should be authorization. And the value should be bearer, then a space, and then your API key. So let's try that now. And now you should see, okay, we're authorized, but now we're missing data. But the authentication part works. So how do we add data? Well, quite simple. We just go here to body, okay? We're gonna go ahead to form data, and we're just gonna add our key value pair. So we define three keys, if you remember, our user email, product name, and price. Okay, so let's try that. User email, uh, product name and price okay and now we're going to define the values for all of them so let's say for my uh, product uh, user email I'm just going to add one of my emails here okay for the product name um, let's call it no code tool and the price should be 20 whatever that means okay so let's actually try that because now our API call should work we're authenticated we have the correct endpoint and we added all the required um, basically form data. So let's try that out. And what should happen now? First of all, we should receive two emails and a new data entry should be created here under all products. Right now it's empty as you can see. So let's see what happens. I'm going to click on send. And we just get the response with the status success, which is a positive uh, response, which means there were no errors. Everything worked fine. So I'm going to go ahead back here to bubble and let's refresh the database. You can see great. We have our new database entry called no code tool created by the app admin with the price of 20. As you can see, this is one of the emails I got. I got both emails. The one I got here to info at NoCoHQ, which is the um, admin email basically, with the summary name of product, no code tool, which is dynamic, and the price, which is 20, which is also correct. So we triggered this whole workflow from an external point, which in this case was Postman, and we kind of sent over data to Bubble. Uh, which create a new data type, but then we also send a dynamic email to a dynamic user using this data which is sent over. And this is basically the power of backend workflows. You can create all kinds of workflows, trigger them from external points, and basically connect your bubble application to all kinds of external services. And we're actually doing this a lot in our real life application. So it's a really, really powerful tool um, that you can use to really take your bubble applications to the next level. So yeah, that's basically it. Um, if, you're, um, if you want to then take basically your API call you defined here and export it, you can click on this button and you can see the code basically for this in all kinds of uh, programming languages and many um, other platforms support just copying this and then importing it so automatically the API call will be integrated. Otherwise, you can take a look at the code for something like JavaScript and see how you would make this API call to your bubble application in code. So that's basically it. Um, thank you for watching. And good luck building back-end workflows bubble. Bye.